No. How about now? It's working. <gasps> I think it's working, dude. It was one little button press. One little button press, and I think we did it. <laughs> I'll know in a second when our buddy uh, Prince Mike of Poland is, is here. Prince Mike of Poland in the chat today. We're enjoying tasty beverages, right, Jimmy? Yes, Prince Mike of Poland. <laughs> oh, he, he says, oh, yeah. So I think I think he hears me now. If you can hear me, Mike, say yes, please. Or just yes. You don't have to say please. That's me. But hey, welcome to a spontaneous live episode of Dope Nostalgia. We had so much fun doing it for the third birthday that we decided um, to do it again. Right? Just yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, why not? It just worked. out of nowhere. And so here we are, um, having some drinks on a Monday night. Jimmy has to work at four in the morning. <laughs> I get up at three. Yeah. I still haven't heard anything in the chat where they said they could hear me. So please let me know if you can hear me. That would be much appreciated. We have a very special drink to talk about throwbacks because, you know, we're a throwback 90s podcast. But this is really cool. This is the Tahiti Treat Vodka. Oh, We've had this at our friend Crystal's house before, or Emmy's house, but Crystal got this Tahiti Treat Vodka before, too. Can you Mike, get that? Mikey's here? saying, but why? But what do you mean, but why? Can you actually, I asked if you can hear me. Can you Can you type in yes, if you can hear me, please? Because I don't know if I'm just you talking into Naomi's air. hear voice say yes, I can hear Naomi. Please, somebody, somebody. That would be very appreciative. And I don't know what you're saying why to. Is it this amazing Tahiti treat on a Monday night full of vodka? It could be. Oh, he does hear me. Okay, we're good. We're set. We're going to have a special friend joining us in a little bit once they arrive. Our, our buddy Kendra is going to pop in at any second. And what we're celebrating tonight is now we recorded for this week. We've already recorded an episode. Space Jam, the soundtrack. So Jimmy and I were recording and I was like, why don't we just do another recording about another soundtrack? He's like, okay. And then I took it one step further and said, why don't we do it on YouTube? Here we are. Why not? Here we are. So all, all of you Wayne's World fans who, who love the show, love the movie, and Wayne's, you love... Wayne's World is one of the ultimate 90s movie soundtracks. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the rock fans in the world. And another thing is we haven't planned a damn thing. We're doing, we're nope. completely winging this. <laughs> Usually we have some kind of layout of things we're going to talk about. Pre planned. No. Nope. Nothing. We've got nothing. So if you want to chime in in the chat and let us know what you want to talk about when it comes to Wayne's World, please do join us in the or, chat. Or your thoughts on a song or. Mm hmm. That's what we're here for to get you guys involved. So before we before we start talking about Wayne's World, we're gonna wait till Kendra arrives. So I just wanted to show share a couple things. Um, Twenty four okay, hours now. I have a question. Why are you wearing the cat ears? Because I'm part of the Meow Meow crew. Is that because <laughs> your cat's name is Meow Meow? No, we're a group of of friends. We're a group of friends who go to New Kids concerts and wear cat ears that light up. It was actually either Donnie or Joe from the New Kids on the Block who named us. I'm not the runner of the group. I'm not the leader of the group. I'm a member of it. It's like a sorority. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> yeah. So there's no, there's, dubbed in? there's no real initiation or anything crazy like that. But, um, but just a, I guess I can't make fun of your cat ears since I have lightsabers behind me. Maybe um, you'd like to do a lightsaber demonstration. Throw you on the spot. Oh, I don't quite have the space for it. You're pretty close to the wall right now. Ugh. He's pretty close to the wall, but he's going to do, he's going to show you some lightsaber action. You can only get this at the Jedi Jimmy podcast. Listen, it makes the noises. <laughs> I 
That was That's so good cool. Enough. I've hit four things. That was that was really great. I hope it, it it didn't break. No. Oh no, that one's actually made to hit things. What kind of batteries does it take? Uh, it's rechargeable. You plug it into the wall. Okay. So you can catch more of that on Jedi Jimmy's podcast. Tell the folks about Jedi Jimmy podcast. The Jedi Jimmy podcast. It's basically me, Jedi Jimmy, talking about everything Star Wars, anything new that comes up on Disney movies, any of that kind of stuff. But not only do I do like a breakdown of that stuff, but I also demonstrate different styles of lightsaber combat or other weapons used in uh, Star Wars. Like, for example, eventually, uh, soon I'll be doing a podcast dealing with the uh, Gaffy Stick, which is that of the uh, Sand People or Tusken Raiders. But yeah, I just break down everything. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube, which is on the Locker Room YouTube page. And it's crazy. You can also catch Jimmy on the morning show, The Locker Room, 95.7 Cruise FM from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Yep, that's me. That's I'm, you. I'm the short one. <laughs> hey, oh, I should take a moment to share uh, gifts for BlockCon, but also this unicorn here. This unicorn is, is a lovely gift I received. After, after I had uh, an accident back at the end of December, my good friend Adrian from the YouTube channel Rat Tail, she sent me this lovely Get Well Soon unicorn, and I just wanted to share it with everybody and say thank you once again to Adrian for that. Nice, oh, eh? that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. We really, I, I so much appreciated that. It made me feel so much better. And also, since I'm going to BlockCon in Chicago, and I'm leaving in about 24 hours from now to the airport, um, I wanted to bring this with me, this, this coloring book, it's the penis adult coloring book. And I'd like to give it away to somebody at BlockCon. I'm just going to think up of a contest to who am I going to give this to? Jimmy, what do you think they should do to earn a penis coloring book? <laughs> Throw you on the spot. Especially with the majority of the people that are going to be at Block on are ladies. Um, this is a very coveted item. Fuck the bad boy and marry the nice guy. You see that? This one says dick. Straight up dick. I have no idea. This is, uh, on an audio podcast, I'm showing this visual coloring book for you all. Exactly, as you should. But it's but um, we are live on YouTube. We are so, live on YouTube. So that they will actually see those pictures <laughs> if you are live on the YouTube page. And another thing I'd like to mention, don't go to Walmart to get your photos, your digital photos developed. So I have this picture from the cruise that I wanted to get blown up and hang on the wall. So it costs about three bucks. I said, what a great deal for an eight by ten, right? It looks like a fucking negative. Look at that. Can you see it? Looks like oh, wow, shit. That's... This is what happens when you go to Walmart, yo. So don't do it. We're, I got to go to a high quality photo place. We'll get that fixed right up. What else is new that we could share? You got anything new to talk about, Jimmy? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's still, he's not even drunk. Not I'm really. not, but it's just uh, you're throwing me on the spot. I love doing uh, that. Welcome to my show. I think I have another strip show in June, but that's inside baseball. Is it a private strip show, or can the public come see it? I'm not sure yet. I'm still waiting for my invitation. Okay. That sounds good. Jimmy is a, a stripper. He's the only little person stripper in Western Canada, or the most popular no, one. Male. Male. male male there 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 are a number of female uh midget strippers but not male okay me and one guy in quebec oh okay What's as far name? as i know oh we don't want to publicize him because you're the guy mike p says make a dick from a napkin best dick wins i don't know how would you do that 
it's like a some kind of special slutty origami you're talking about. Uh, I've never obviously heard of it. Mike knows how to do it. Mike knows how. I will be handing out here in town as well as at BlockCon in Chicago this weekend. I'll be handing out these um, dope nostalgia wristbands. They got sparkles on them and some dope nostalgia stickers. So if you see me, uh, tell me, hey, I want a wristband or a sticker, and it's all hey, yours. I have one you do. I know Jimmy has one. So yeah, they're a new little swag item for you guys. I'll be giving out for free, and uh, yeah, and it's a thank you too to all of those of you who are fans and listen to the podcast. We appreciate you. There it is. He's got his on. Uh, I have a TDD treat ready. We're just basically waiting for our third member of our little posse here today. And in the meanwhile, having uh, some drinks. I'm still drinking the Summer's Bee Cider. But I'm ready to crack the Tahiti Treat right away here. And Jimmy, what are you drinking? I just Pilsner. And he's even wearing a Pilsner shirt. Yeah. Pilsner is a classic Canadian beer very popular in the province of saskatchewan but it's, but it's actually brewed and it was uh, it was brewed here in alberta it's actually a lethbridge beer lethbridge which is close to your hometown yes mm-hmm. down of Tabor. because actually if you remember the old cans that used to have the lethbridge train train bridge they have since changed mm-hmm. that but it was that high that high train bridge that went across the coolies over the uh, old man river. Oh, cool. The coolies. Cool. That's right. Coolies are basically like foothills, but they go downward. So it's kind of like bumpy Valley. (laughs) Maybe we should take a moment here to, uh, here we are. Now I'm set. I'm set. You got your, for this lovely conversation was the oopsie 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 can't really see wayne but that's okay oh i do have my ears on rebecca hi hi rebecca yeah you can see them there's there they are uh she rebecca see rebecca's one of the main founders of the meow meow crew so welcome rebecca she's also going to be one of my roomies uh in the next few days we're gonna have awesome times I'm telling you, I'm excited. Oh, congratulations, Mike. You made the Rosario's finals, karaoke finals. Congratulations. He's in the karaoke world championships and he's kicking ass. Here's a cheers and congratulations to Mike. Woo. Yeah, he's, only, he's only in the finals because I didn't join. He didn't. Usually Jimmy will come and sing Friends in Low Places. And man, I feel like a woman. You haven't done Barbie Girl in a while. I'm disappointed. Yeah, that I do that better with a shock collar. No, no need to elaborate. That's fine. (laughs) Well, so we're going to be talking about Wayne's World today. Not the movie itself, but the very first Wayne's World soundtrack, which was quite a success. Did any of you guys ever used to watch Wayne's World when it was on Saturday Night Live? I I did. Yeah. But okay. but the movie was all, the movie had so many iconic mm-hmm. iconic spots like it's that you can't like the uh like the part with uh, when Wayne said uh, going we're not worthy, we're not worthy. <laughs> like when one of my favorite skits uh there's two of them. One of them is with Tom Hanks as their sound guy. And he's okay, like yeah. in, in the basements at Wayne and, at Wayne and Garth's, I think it's Wayne's house. And they're setting up for Aerosmith to come play at Wayne's house. Yeah. And then another one is when uh, Madonna was on the show. Like, they, you know how they go into their dream sequence? Where they go, doo-loo, 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 doo-loo. And then all of a sudden, Wayne found himself in Madonna's bedroom. And it was like the Justify My Love video. And he was like terrified of her. <laughs> yeah, so, fantastic. Swing. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, another favorite classic line from the movie is uh, when they're ordering. What did, what did they say? Cream of some young guy. Yeah. Is that a bad thing now? Is that a racially insensitive joke now? Not really. See, one I thing we found think... from watching all these '80s and '90s movies is that Basically... there's a lot of things that wouldn't fly now. You wouldn't. You wouldn't say that. But that I don't. No, it's basically there. You're asking for jizz. Um, mm-hmm. You're asking for jizz. Which reminds me of this beautiful penis coloring book that could be yours. You know, that's more offensive than. Oh, I get it. Look at that. Oh, you can't see it because Wayne and Garth. That's oh, fine. yeah. Cause... You can get a close look of it at, at BlockCon. I'll bring it for all the girls. And boys. Yeah, you can't see it there either. Whew. But yeah, that was like um, another scene I really liked from the movie is um, Stan Makita's donut shop because it's basically a rip on Tim Hortons. Yes. Right. That's great. And Ed O'Neill plays the uh, manager from Married yes. to Children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That was really fun. Uh, I, I sometimes forget that um, Rebecca loves to color penises. No, that's what I was going to say. I sometimes forget that Rob Lowe was in the movie. Oh, yeah. Remember, he was a conniving bastard. He was, wasn't he trying to steal Tia Carrere from Wayne? Or wasn't he supposed to be like her record manager or something like that? Like he was. Yeah, like, he was trying to keep them apart. Mm hmm. He was trying to keep them apart. I think he 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 was trying to hit on her too. I think if I remember correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rob Lowe. Oh man, what other scenes do you remember from the movie? It's been so long since I saw the movie. Me other too. than other than the iconic scene that we're going to talk about later uh, when we talk about said song. Yeah. Product placements in this movie. I remember the scene where they were talking about shilling to the corporate, how <laughs> shilling to the corporate, whatever. And then they were like drinking out of a Pepsi can and opening a Pizza Hut box. <laughs> and they're just talking about how they're above doing that corporate sellout shit. <laughs> yeah. Was that, was that in the movie or in the, in that, was the, in the skit? that was in the movie. That was definitely in the movie. Um, Fun fact, Dom DeLuise's son, Michael DeLuise, is one of the guys on the Wayne's World movie. You know, one of Wayne's friends. Yes, but, but Dom DeLuise, uh, he had a lot of his kids in in the uh, in movies and TV. I'm pretty sure his name was Michael, but there might have been a Peter. Or there might There's be both Peter. of them. You know, oh, feel free to fact correct us out there if we have no idea what the hell yeah, we're talking we, about. We, there's actually no prep done to this <laughs> podcast at all. Remember, we just did this out of the blue for no reason at all. And it's going to be fun. Um, but there will be an episode of Dope Nostalgia coming out. She can't be sleeping, Mikey. She said she would be here. She was with JD. They were driving. I swear. I swear. She'll be here. Um what was I gonna say? Actually, all three of his sons have, were in TV and movies. Hmm. There was Michael, Peter, and uh, Dave. Okay. So I named two out of three. I'm I can't even believe I remembered that. That's weird. But uh... actually, actually, I think all three of them were in the uh, the sci-fi series called. Uh, uh, Sequest DSV. It was it was basically oh. like Star Trek, but under the ocean in the future. Okay. But the future. But if you look at where that this came out in the nineties, I want to say early two thousands, mm -hmm. and the future was actually ten years ago, where people were living underneath the ocean in the movie. <laughs> so it was another one of the movies where they were saying something was going to happen in the future. And we passed that, and yeah, people aren't living in cities under the ocean. Almost all the movies we watched said things would happen in a certain way. They've never really occurred, except for Idiocracy. 
Idiocracy is happening. That movie didn't intend to be a preview of the future, but it it's playing out. We might have to just go on and uh, start our start right up here with uh, our track by track while we're waiting. And, um, and just bring her in. Yeah, she'll come in whenever she comes in. All right. So this soundtrack and the movie came out on February 18th, 1992. It was a very popular soundtrack um, album, certified double platinum by the Recording Industry Association. So we're going to talk a bit about each song on the album. I want to start with the song by Cinderella. Now, the funny thing is with Spotify and soundtracks, sometimes not every song on the album is on the Spotify playlist. Sometimes. Yeah, it's the same thing like with sometimes with YouTube or with uh, any of those. I don't because there's certain artists that will only release their albums on certain platforms like Amazon or. Yeah. So basically, if Garth Brooks had a song on the soundtrack, it wouldn't be on here. It wouldn't be on Spotify. No, it, you would you would have a. Uh, uh, a cover done by somebody else because he only does Amazon. Mm, okay. Okay. I getcha. You can only find Garth Brooks stuff on Amazon and this is kind of what causes the, the issue, right? Um, so we, we won't be able to play a track, a clip of the song. It's also not one of the more popular songs on the album from what I remember. But Cinderella was a hot band, but not really in 92 as much. I feel like they were hotter at the end of the 80s. Yeah, they're they're more of an 80s. They're more hair. But even in the 90s, hair was big. To a point. It started to, it started to die. It started to die. But you still had, like, uh, who uh, some people that are on this soundtrack. Um, even, maybe even earlier. Uh, the next song on the album was by Bullet Boys. Do you remember Bullet Boys? A bit. Like, I know the song that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's called but, Rock Candy. Yeah, like, it's... You must have known the soundtrack, though. Yes, I knew the soundtrack front and back. A lot of the songs... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And there's some songs that, it, like, stick out more than others. Mm -hmm. And going through the soundtrack, I totally forgot that or didn't realize that they were even on the soundtrack or forgot. Well, here's a little bit of Bullet Boys, Rock Candy, if we can hopefully hear that all right. Should be playing. It's not... Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, I know what to do. I'm such an amateur streamer, dude. Okay, share audio. Right? All you tech whizzes out there? Here we go. Now we can hear it? Well, the song's got a big build up to it. Turn it up a bit. How's that? You know what I just realized? Our whole st our stream could get taken down because YouTube our YouTube shuts uh, down music so easily. It, <gasps> it kind of depends now. I don't know. It kind of depends. It's what it what uh, YouTube does is it blocks it blocks music in certain areas. Sometimes. Sometimes, it, like it said, it says, okay, there's a copyright, but it allows you to do it, but you can't monetize it. No, you can't monetize it, but it's a real bitch to deal with because sometimes I've had them actually like block the stream and I have to submit a request to have it unblocked because it's a yeah, reaction being, video. So that does happen. Yeah, being in video, it being in radio, we've had that happen a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. We can we can probably get away with previewing a few of the clips, but maybe not the whole thing. No. Mm -hmm. 
But Bullet Boys, there's there's a band I should see what they're up to, you know, see if they want to come on the show. Yeah, I think they would be a good fit for the Dope Nostalgia podcast. The podcast. The podcast. And then the song that this one's really, I wonder if the, this one's really famous. And it's. Dream Weaver. I'm wondering. I actually, when when I was going through the soundtrack, I thought it was done by somebody else. I didn't. I totally forgot it was done by him. Gary Wright. This is the original, I believe. No, it, it, <laughs> But isn't this Garth's? No, it's not Garth's fantasy, is it? What's that? Was this Wayne's fantasy or Garth's fantasy, this song? I think it's. Because Foxy Lady is Garth's. Yes, I think it's I think it's Wayne's. Mm. I believe so. So Dreamweaver is one of the songs that I remember the most from the soundtrack for sure. The next yeah, one. I, I have a confession to make. I do not like the red hot chili peppers. Can't stand them. Can't really? stand them. No. Um I'm not a fan of the music, and I'm not a fan of them as people. But but even <laughs> even like I I like some of Red Hot Chili Pepper songs. Mm -hmm. This probably doesn't top the list for me. Mm. Well, it's called Sika Mika Nico. Sika Mika Nico is the name of the song. I don't remember it at all. Let's see. Yep, I hate it already. Absolutely hate it already. Sorry to the chili pepper. But this is but this is kind of the like they're kind of a band that's kind of, you're a rock you're a rock chick mm -hmm. through and through and that's kind of when when rock and and hip hop were kind of trying to mesh. No, oh, they're saying Rebecca's saying she can't hear the music. Well, how about now? But maybe being a live feed will let you play the music. Oh, maybe YouTube isn't letting me play the music, but also it's okay. You're not missing anything. She still couldn't hear it. Okay, that's fine. You're not missing shit. <laughs> I bet you it's something where it blocks us from streaming music on YouTube. Yeah, or probably. Or she's in an area that that it won't allow it. That could there's be too. Because there's blocks in certain areas. That could be too. Uh, the next song uh, is called Time Machine by Black Sabbath. How well do you no, know that song, Jimmy? What's that? How well do you know that song, Jimmy? I don't know the song very well, but I know it to hear it. I'm, I'm going to sound like a horrible person. I'm more of an Aussie fan than I am a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Like, like That's more, not a bad of, thing. more of more of his single stuff than that of uh, Black Sabbath. Because mm -hmm. I was a huge fan of the Aussie music when he first left the band, and then Randy Rhodes was his guitar player, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's that was my jam, and that's when I really got into. Uh, like Ozzy's stuff, and then, mm. and then being in rock radio, I like it, but it's not a hundred percent my jam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 
I respect Black Sabbath for the band that they are, but the more songs that I've liked have been the Aussie songs. Solo. Yeah. For, for I'm kind of the same way. Yeah, me too. I, so I get what you're saying. Um, so that's another song I do not remember. When we said, oh, let's do Wayne's World soundtrack, I thought we would remember everything. <laughs> but but the, th- but the thing is, though, is is the version that they're playing, there is a, there is some changes that they made to Time Machine mm. for Wayne's World, specifically. Okay. Yeah, I think probably some of the language. Yeah. Okay. Um. The next song is the theme. <laughs> the theme of Wayne's World. Oh my goodness, I love this song. But nobody can hear it. We could sing it. We could sing it. We could look up the lyrics. Okay. Wayne's World theme. I shouldn't be looking on Wikipedia. Wikipedia? No, you stupid. Okay. Wayne's World theme lyrics. And it- so here here's the lyrics. Um that's not right. The lyrics are this is why we shouldn't do impromptu things. <laughs> yeah, we should have doing. Yeah, this is not going as well as we were hoping. <laughs> okay. Um it's Wayne's world. It's Wayne's world. It's party time. It's, it's excellent. It's Wayne's world. Remember that? Yeah. And then the verses chicks go mental when we go down the street it's wayne and garth that they want to meet we're in the basement playing with our toys and if you don't like it you're a sphincter boy <laughs> what the fuck uh, uh, we might crawl right into a rut she yeah, outright right monkeys might fly out of your butt <laughs> uh, the, the right to party is a battle we have fought so we will surrender and become amish not there you go yeah i think we can stop well, there that was well written that was very yeah. well written thank you thank you everyone for enjoying that um classic piece of music um i may as well close the spotify because we can't even play it but uh everybody knows the wayne's world theme because if you watch it on saturday night live they'd sing it too but just not that full version with the verses and such I feel like we're kind of moving into some songs that I know better now. Like number eight, Ballroom Blitz. But this is but this is done and not not by the original artist. This is done by Tia Carrera. Now so you're a, a big fan of Tia Carrera, so you can tell people about her. She she uh, plays and um, she's in the movie. What's her name in the movie? She's the love interest of Wayne. Yeah. Oh darn. And she plays um, in the band. She sings in the band. I just know that she's been in a lot of stuff. Like so many things. And But I, I keep going back to... It's a Dolph Lundgren movie with Brandon Lee. It's called uh, Showdown on Little Tokyo. But... Okay. Um, yeah, she's... I didn't realize that she actually sang those songs. Mm-hmm. Like I, because they made it uh, like she was a singer in the movie, and I didn't realize that she actually really was the singer until we started going through the contra uh, the the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. She played Cassandra. In that the was movie. her name, Cassandra. Cassandra was her name. Yeah, yeah, and Rob Lowe was trying to steal her from Wayne. He yeah, him apart. Rob Lowe was a dick in the movie. Rob Lowe was, a, you know what he was? A penis. <laughs> and anyway, yes. So the original version of Ballroom Blitz was recorded by a band named Sweet. And this yes. was in this Wayne's World soundtrack. This is the first time I ever heard Ballroom Blitz. So I had no idea really? the song had already been made as a hit in the past. I believe it was released in like the 70s or something by Sweet. Yeah, it's way before the movie. Well, as we've said before, especially like there, whenever you hear covers and stuff in the 90s, it could have always been done by somebody. You're hearing it for the first time. Sometimes you don't know that it's a cover. Like yeah. Gangster's Paradise. 
I didn't know it was a Stevie Wonder song called Pastime Paradise, right? No idea. No idea. Hey, look who's here, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Kendra knows more than we do. We're drowning here, Kendra. <laughs> drowning. <laughs> I came to save the day. <laughs> we bit off more than we could chew. We said, let's go completely unprepared into making a podcast. And here we are. And, and we we're are. going live. And then she realizes that we're playing clips of the songs and nobody that's uh, watching the podcast can actually hear them. Because you can't stream Spotify on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so you got to sing them now. We just did. Well, I, we oh, sang the theme to Wayne's we, World. We, we, we just read the lyrics. I, I, I kind of sing. Ish, ish. Ish. But yeah, we're halfway through the album right now. We we're just talking about the song Ballroom Blitz by Tia Carrera. Ballroom Blitz. I love singing that song. It's fun. It's fun to do the, wow, yeah, that part. Yeah, that, that part's fun. But you said it's Tia Carrera, so it's not the uh, the Sweet version, right? No. It's... That's what we were just saying. Is like the original yeah. version is by a band called Sweet. Yeah, and it was covered Who by Tia Carrera, knew, and she didn't have to look it up. <laughs> yeah. We've had I to know look a lot up of music. Everything we've just said. So, uh, Tia Carrera, yeah, she's got a great voice. Now, now she's had a very successful like TV syndicated TV shows, especially career, and I think she's also. Um, won a Grammy award, I believe, or been Grammy nominated for singing. We wow. Could look it up, I, but... I didn't realize that, but like, I definitely don't remember like her for her music as much as her acting, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I remember actually uh, hearing some of it when we did the podcast uh, for the top soundtracks. Because mm -hmm. Wayne's World, I think, was on that list, if I remember, or at least yep. a mention of it. And I remember listening to her stuff, and I was like, I didn't even realize it until then. Mm -hmm. Actually, she's a Grammy Award winner for for Hawaiian music. Awesome. And a couple of Hawaiian music albums that she did. Well, that makes a lot uh, of she sense. She <laughs> won a Grammy Award in 2011 and in 2009. I love that. For... Mm -hmm album for album names i can't even pronounce huana ki aloha nice. and aikina good job jimmy I'm probably saying them wrong good but researching we're glad, <laughs> we're glad that you checked it out for sure yeah uh we were singing like we said the wayne's world lyrics earlier and rebecca says those lyrics are very visual it definitely tells a story like especially <laughs> the part about the monkeys flying out of our, our butts it's my but that's <laughs> but that also is very Wayne's world, you know. Mm -hmm. It is, ask. it is. It's one of the classic classic phrases that they always say. Um when Saturday Night Live did the fortieth anniversary, I wanna say, they brought Wayne and Garth back to do a top ten list about the I can't remember what it was about, but it was pretty damn good. So I'm sure if you can find yeah. any Saturday Night Live resources out there. There was a, going back to talking about the movie, there was a rumor too that uh, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey had had a falling out or that they weren't getting along. There really? Was, mm -hmm. There was a rumor. That's all but it know. hasn't been confirmed, but. That's all we know because we know nothing. Also, they but they did <laughs> they did do that together so it's possible that things are fine now you never know Just, i mean mike's career went insane after wayne's world right after he left saturday night live mike Myers it's true like he kind of kinda took successful. off dana carvey not as much yeah but mike myers got like, huge franchises after that shrek yeah and like you know you think awesome shrek powers. and um awesome powers yeah um yeah, <laughs> just really classic movies. Yeah, so, you know, there might have been a little bit of bitterness there. Who knows? I don't see Dana Carvey as the type of guy who'd be bitter about it, though. You know? How could he with those glasses and that awesome hair? Come on. He's yeah. a very talented comic, and he's amazing at impressions. So I, I, I've gotten to hear a lot of his impressions and such. Um, 
there's a podcast that doesn't need my advertising because it's doing quite fine on its own. Uh, Conan O'Brien needs a friend. And uh, <laughs> he has Dana Carvey on as a guest regularly, and it's just a riot. So good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Back to the Wouldn't it be interesting thing. if they did like a, a reboot movie of it and seeing them now as like old men still acting like cats? Like Wayne's World? Do we, well, we yeah. Wayne's World? Well, they redid Bill yeah. and Ted. Bill and yeah. Ted's kind of comparable, don't you think? I think so. Kind of has the same vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does have the same vibe, but it's different. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Bill and Ted is awesome. But I think Wayne's World is more iconic because of your, uh, you know, one-liners like excellent and and they used all the all the slangs like you know i think they they owned it more than bill and ted bill and ted's i prefer wayne's world over bill and ted if you had to pick that sounds like a poll we should run do you prefer bill and ted or oh, wayne's good world? idea hey i like it do it in um, the chat now what's your favorite out of the two <laughs> yeah, if you're in the chat, which which I think uh, we're all which, all in agreement. Wayne Wayne's World is better. But. Yeah, I thought so. But which partnership yeah, you like? They both they both have their own like catchphrases and stuff. So, um, mm-hmm. but we're gonna wrap up the album. We we're about halfway through the actual track list now. Number nine, which we brought up earlier, Foxy Lady, the Jimi Hendrix yes. experience from a very yeah. cool scene. I I, I like legit. Yeah, can't hear this song and not think of this part of the movie. I always think of this movie. And him like, song. <laughs> every time. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. And like, I was young enough that like Jimi Hendrix, I didn't even know who he was until I saw this movie. <laughs> That's the thing. It was just the age group we were in, right? But but this yeah. this, this soundtrack, there's there's a few songs that do that where as soon as you hear the song, you think of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stairway to Heaven <laughs> when this movie came out I didn't know what Stairway to Heaven was I'm sorry for all you Led Zeppelin <laughs> fans who think that's totally a horrid thing to say but I didn't know Stairway to Heaven I wasn't raised on heavy metal rock and roll so there, when I saw the sign turn and they're like point to the sign and say st- playing Stairway to Heaven is not allowed yeah, well, in the when, they're, store. when they're in the in the guitar store and they're trying yeah. out the guitars, no, and... no stairway to heaven. I didn't know what that meant yeah. unt- until I was much older and realized it's like a ten minute epic. And I was like, oh, okay, but, okay, okay. But it's it's probably one that back uh, back then that everyone who grabbed a guitar would try would try to play Stairway to Heaven and they're like okay we're tired of it. <laughs> it's like picture it's karaoke. It's still it's still a song. It's still a song that gets played in in music stores. Like yes. I like I know whenever I've gone into the music store and like playing around with some of the guitars and you hear somebody like plug in you know. It's iconic for a reason. That's true. Rebecca but, says but that she prefers Bill and Ted. Really? Go. Yes, wow. yes. Yes, could be. Oh, she didn't know Stairway to Heaven either. No. Just wasn't music that was played in my home. You know? I had such a an eclectic um, array of music being played in my house. Because, like, my mom was very, like, 90s country. My dad was very much into classic rock. My sister was into, like, hair metal. So I kind of grew up on everything. Mm. And And when this movie came out i was switching to the hard rock to your ozzy alice cooper zeppelin like to the rock and roll stuff like my dad was country my Mm -hmm. mom was classic rock but now her classic rock and this classic rock are in the same genre like they all but they're so different but they're all just called classic rock they're all still, you know, thrown together as classic rock. With Bon Jovi, which I'm like, what? No. I, I it's, know. It's, There's some things that are weird. being put in classic rock now that's weird. Makes me feel old. <laughs> yep. 
But the, the Jimi Hendrix experience, of course, that's a huge deal. So Foxy Lady being in the movie always makes me, <laughs> every time I hear that song, makes me think of Garth. He's like walking some, and he's like swinging at the same time. Isn't he like hip thrusting when he's like yeah, he's <laughs> kind of, walking he's to the kind song? Of, he's kind of <laughs> trying to look like he's walking sexy. Swing, swing, <laughs> swing. Yeah. Foxy. <laughs> Uh, another classic one, number ten, Alice Cooper's "Feed My Frankenstein." Oh, but again, that's a great tune. But again, that scene with Alice Cooper when they're when they're meeting them, mm-hmm. that you you know we're not worthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> another like iconic moment that like people still still do to this day, like. It, it you know like you know that this is a classic movie when there's so many things you can take from the movie and still reference today mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah sometimes the phrases will come into my head and i'll be like at work or something and i want to say one of the phrases but i'm like no one here is going to understand what that meant because they're all yeah. too young except not oh, yeah yeah <laughs> um, and and with the fact that i work at a classic rock radio station Mm -hmm. and this song comes up i think of that movie Mm -hmm. but i've also seen alice live and his his shows are awesome and you also think of all the yeah the 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 effects and the stuff that he has there like the big frankenstein that blows up and is there Mm -hmm. and like it's yeah. It's not it's not evil sorcery. Well, and Alice Cooper, he was like the original like shock rocker. Like he was the one that came out and like you know, had had people like, "Oh my god, what is he doing on stage?" you know. He he kind of paved the way for like Marilyn Manson and all these other people that came afterwards that like made a big deal on stage, you know. Mm-hmm. You think of like even like Ozzy came after him, right? Um, is he before? Uh, no, pretty close to the same, I think, because They're of Black pretty Sabbath. Close. Yeah, but like you know, you think like he definitely kind of paved the way for a lot of that like stuff on stage because wasn't he was one that was doing like like kind of horror scene type stuff on stage. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna get through these quickly because it's almost Jimmy's bedtime. <laughs> Okay, number he's, got, he's got to get his beauty sleep. Number eleven, ride with yourself, Rhino Bucket. Never heard of it. Don't remember it. Rhino Bucket, the band. Great name. I actually Rhino don't remember Bucket. that either. No, nope. neither do I. This is and this is why of, we're very prepared for this podcast. <laughs> real test of memories here. People are gonna like unsubscribe. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, please don't unsubscribe. We'll do better. Uh, okay. We could have made this a drinking game. Every time we didn't remember something, they do a shot. Dude. We can't do that now. Could we? No. <laughs> it's too late. I can't. Okay. I no, he can't. So so this is what, like, if they've been counting, uh, do that many shots now. Go for it. Yes. For those watching. <laughs> Number 12. How loving... many are watching? Five? <laughs> like two. Number 12, <laughs> 11, you're loving Eric Clapton. Everyone knows Eric Clapton. Uh, I don't know the song, though. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, yeah, he's been an interesting figure of late. I don't really want to talk about him, but um, he's a classic. He's an old man now. Uh, <laughs> he's an old he man. has old man ideas. <laughs> But thanks for the music, Eric Clapton. We appreciate it. Take a your... shot. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. He screams at clouds and stuff, basically. You know? <laughs> All right. Uh, n- number 13, another Tia Carrer song. Jimmy, do you remember Why You Want to Break My Heart? Done by her, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it, since we can't hear it. Can you sing it for us? I can't sing it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> I don't know the words. I just that's remember. That's what the internet's for. Up. 
make it up. I just I just Dying remember watching her. At, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just right? remember watching her uh, sing the song. Watching her is the is the watching key is the free <laughs> phrase I got out of that. <laughs> Jimmy I, has a I, thing for. We were on the same wave, wavelength there. <laughs> Jimmy has a thing for female lead singers. Yeah, that's kind of how uh, Naomi and I met. <laughs> did you guys go on a date once? We did. We went to date at Boston Pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the first and, time I ever saw Jimmy eat, and the last time I saw him eat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, and then it's shortly like thereafter, we went Jimmy to a movie actually... and she saw me cry. Yeah, and you said that I must be dead inside because I didn't cry to A Star Is Born. But, but that I wasn't a date. That was a, that was a friend. That was that a was friendship just, movie. That was just a friendly thing after the fact. <laughs> you were like, "You're so cold," because <laughs> I didn't cry <laughs> I was, and you were crying. I didn't really. You're because you looked over and said, "Are you crying?" And you're like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not. And she's like, like dead face, like not dead face, but just, <laughs> just no. And I'm like, there's something wrong with you. Oh man. <laughs> JD and I went to see that movie with like three other people and all five of us were crying our faces off. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was hard to watch that, but I was just like, no, no, I'm not going to, no. I can't. You have more control over your, your tear ducts. I wasn't even yeah. medicated yet. I don't think. No, I wasn't even medicated yet. Now I have no feelings. So, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that ain't true. I can cry sometimes. Anyway, Tia Carrera. I, why do you want to break my heart, lady? Why? Number 14 was not on all of the soundtracks, apparently only on some versions. Soundgarden's Loud Love, which is a song from one of their albums. Maybe their first album or maybe their second oh. album. Loud Love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't I don't remember this one. Like I don't I, remember like, it either. When I when I thought like Wayne's World, I definitely wasn't aware that there was a Soundgarden song. And I well, love Soundgarden, so no, I'm well. Chris Cornell is definitely one of my favorite singers of all time. So, oh yeah, yeah. he's definitely. Uh, there were songs that were featured in the movie that weren't on the soundtrack. Um, I don't remember "Kicks Cold Chills." Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Definitely remember "Ugly Kid Joe." Everything about yeah. you. <laughs> Love oh, yeah. that song. <laughs> Another Tia Carrere song, but this uh, called "Fire." Uh, oh, it's Let Me Stand Next to Your Fire, like Jimi Hendrix song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? That makes me think of uh, the documentary for Woodstock 99. I don't want to um, watch that. I'm, oh, man, it's going to upset in, me. It's intense. And, like, that was a, <laughs> that was the last song that uh, I cry. was played, played at the festival. And uh, <laughs> when, like, the... Like for anybody who do doesn't know about the, but like you know the whole festival gets out of control and there's like destruction and fire and mm -hmm. like the Chili Peppers go on for one last song and, and they're like oh they want you to do an encore do one more song and you could see that everything's about to erupt so they choose to sing that song and I'm like maybe not something that's like you know got fire in it. We were just discussing how much I hate the Chili Peppers before you arrived. That's so weird. <laughs> Literally, yeah. So I just gave you another reason to hate them? <laughs> they just keep, you know, scoring points with me. Damn it. No, I can't watch that movie That's, or that documentary. Nope, can't do it. Oh, okay. So anyways, there's a few other songs I've never heard of. We don't need to go over them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, the, but the soundtrack did really well on the charts in 92. It hit number one on the Billboard U.S. 200 and the top of the RPM chart in Canada, number one. Um, did well in other countries as well. Basically, wherever the movie did well, I guess you could say. Um, I remember owning this movie on VHS, owning this cassette. Yeah, I must have not listened to it very much because otherwise I think I would remember a lot more of the songs. I had this CD in the, in the VHS. Yeah. 
Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for the safe wishes, and I hope you have a good night, Mikey. Thank you. And, but, uh, but we did miss one very Have a good important. night, Mikey. Oh, right. We missed... <laughs> We missed the we, most important song. We missed the most iconic song <laughs> on the movie. Oh, you guys didn't <gasps> do it yet? No. No, we, we were saving <laughs> it for the end. I, I didn't even think the, to say anything because I, I, I thought I, you missed the, it. I thought I missed the, it. The van scene. Who doesn't? Or, it's, it's not a not van. A, it's a little oh. blue car, like a yeah, Chev, yeah. Car Chevette scene. or something. Maybe. Start the, the head banging. Yeah. The head and, banging. Do you think that this portrayal of the song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen started a Queen comeback? Or do you think it was just the timing because Freddie Mercury had just passed away before this came out? It was around the same time. It was around passed. the same time. Yeah. I, I, think, I think he think knew that it was going to be in the movie. Yeah. I, I think uh, I think the movie helped a lot because, you know, obviously it opened that song up to a whole new like generation you know because that that song had been out for quite a long time before the movie because whenever you hear that song you <laughs> you bang everybody, your head everybody everybody hey audio you, people you, you he was banging his head and hear somebody oh, yeah, i was banging singing. my head sorry my bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah you go to karaoke and hear anybody that does this song even badly everybody's gonna start rocking out in that middle part it's just oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's very true so i mean it's a classic movie scene, and I think, I think it's single, or it had a lot to do with the resurgence of that. Not only that song, but Queen in pop music again. You know, because yeah. the song itself probably charted even better than it did originally. Oh yeah, you know, oh, and yeah. it's 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 crazy how that like kind of has a f effect on like older songs and it's it's kind of like a big thing that's happening now too with a lot of these shows that are playing like uh older songs like stranger things with um um make a deal with god that song i it's just like the name escaped me but i'm like i know it's back from like the 80s or something something kate and, bush, and like kate bush song caused, kate bush caused, yeah yes something yeah. by the hill hurts again Something uh, about running up, running up a hill. I've running never, up hill. I've running never up watched, that hill or something. I've never watched Stranger um, Things, but I heard about the no, resurgence but like, of that song. Yeah, yeah, the resurgence of that song. Uh, there's also Metallica that like some of their older stuff being played on that show, and all of these kids are playing it on TikTok now. And um, there's some '90s stuff too that's getting played, like in oh, what's the show? Um, Yellow Jackets. Because it's based like uh, half of the show is based in the in the '90s, so they're playing a lot of like older stuff that Sweet. like is starting to chart again. So nice. I like to see I those love it. songs resurge, you know, especially for the artists. Oh, who, me too. There's been a lot of artists in the '90s who got screwed over by record labels, or they like, oh god, yeah, were one-hit so wonders. So it's nice to see, especially if it's a one-hit wonder, if there's a way for them to make some money again off that song. I like to see that. Right. Yeah, no, it'd be it'd be awesome. I I love seeing it because like my uh my niece, my fourteen year old niece, like she'll come like I, I've been teaching her how to play guitar, and she'll be like, yeah, like I found this song by this band called Nirvana. I'm like, oh yes, yes, yes. Let's talk about Nirvana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it because like she's like getting into all the '90s like alternative grunge, and I'm like, yeah, my heart is so mm -hmm. happy. <laughs> My niece and I did a, she, she goes to me, Auntie, let's do a Spotify blend. I said, what is that? She goes, I'm sharing my song list with you and yours blends with mine. And then we have like every other song is the other song. So I'm like, so basically I said, you want to put a bunch of Taylor Swift into my algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. She actually knew some of the songs I had, a few of them. She didn't mind. So I'm interested to see what she has to say. Um, Rebecca says she once had an Uber in Vegas that had karaoke in the car and played the, this song, Bohemian Rhapsody, and we all hit heads. Did we <laughs> now? Did you hit heads against each other? Because Rebecca, I know you've done that before. Rebecca had <laughs> <laughs> poor Rebecca, poor Rebecca. Inside story, concussed. Ah. <laughs> but that that Uber sounds awesome. Like. I totally want to go to Vegas and like do karaoke in an Uber. 
Yes. That could be dangerous. <laughs> Just sit there, drink in the Uber, sing some songs. <laughs> yeah, and her 18-year-old likes Nirvana. I, th- I feel like a lot do. I, you Great know. taste in music. Well, you see these kids wearing the shirts all the time, and I'm like, please mm-hmm. tell me you at least know the songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you wear an old-school band shirt, please know the songs. Have you seen that one shirt that was, I, I think it was either a meme or somebody actually made it where it said Nirvana and then it had like Hanson on it. <laughs> Picture of Hanson. Yep. Sorry, Jimmy, what were you going to say? Or, or at least know that they're a band. <laughs> it's a clothing yeah. company called Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen that shirt though. It's hilarious. The Hanson shirt that says Nirvana. Yeah. I love it. Love it. But yeah. What, what should we say to wrap things up here? We got to let, to the, like you said, Jimmy's got to get his beauty sleep on. Party time. Excellent. <laughs> but again, those are lines from the movie that everybody knows. Mm-hmm. It's just a classic movie that uh, I think it, it it's good to, you know, have an episode about it where people, you know, can be reminded of how awesome it was and like why it's still like you know quoted to this day and you know hopefully if somebody hasn't watched the movie go and watch it and still hopefully it holds up for that's what <laughs> how I much know. we love it that's what i want to <laughs> know like, does it doesn't hold up right because i haven't it, watched it in years but because you know. sometimes the movies that because i'd have to watch it again because sometimes the movies that we watch now and we're like oh you can't say that mm-hmm. is that a movie I don't, oh. I don't know. That's what we were saying earlier. There's so many things where it's like, uh, I don't think you can say that in the movie anymore. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that's okay. So meh. yeah, which that's you something know you run into. Yeah, and the thing is, is times are changing, and and you know, people know better now, right? When it comes, to, well, most people, hopefully, but uh, oh. you know, for for the intention of what this movie was supposed to be about, like, I think. It'll still probably hold up at least in, for the most part, but it it it's such a fun movie, and yeah. uh, had some and the great great, great awesome. songs. Yeah, great songs on it. Wayne and Garth and was just and I thought we knew more, knew it more than we actually did. <laughs> yeah, it was a real test for us actually. Now remember, I came in folks, late, so I just had to figure out what the hell I was here for. <laughs> that's okay. We're going to wrap up this episode of Dope Nostalgia. We're going to say goodbye, and we're going to say thank you to Jimmy and Kendra for being our guests. I want to thank Rebecca and Mikey for taking part in the chat today. And before we go, of course, this episode was brought to you by the Penis Coloring Book, which you will see, <laughs> which you'll see at Block On very soon. It is also brought to you by Tahiti Treat Vodka. They don't give me any money, but maybe they should. Tahiti treat Maybe vodka. they should. Yeah. Because that shit was awesome when I was a kid without vodka. So oh, it's um, sweet. Yes, I Rebecca. To, I need to have some. I'll see you. I'm seeing Rebecca on Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Oh, you guys are going to have so much fun. That's right. Fuck on. Here we come. Go Yeah. On. Get it. Yep. So bye from, bye from Donnie. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> I said it just like he would. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to end the end the stream. Stay on the Zoom. Okay, bye. <laughs> I I don't know how to operate the computer. Wait. Mute. Mute.